right now. Congress can send me a bill that would make it easier for entrepreneurs to patent a new product or idea because we can't give innovators in other countries a big leg up uh, when it comes to opening new businesses and creating new jobs. Certainly make it easier if you're an entrepreneur at a giant corporation with a trademark department and a bunch of lawyers. However, if you are a small entrepreneur without the technical resources of a giant corporation, the president just made it much harder for you. The president Wednesday pushing patent reform that he says will clear the current backlog, backlog of a million patents and in the process ramp up innovation in America, at least for giant corporations, which would be great because over the last 50 years, in theory, the percentage of Americans, this is not a theory, submitting patents has collapsed. Look at those numbers. Supporters of the bill say it will speed up the patent process for inventors and eliminate the ambiguity that leads to lawsuits, lawsuits that keep inventions tied up in courts and off assembly lines. However, more inventions in production uh, would create, I shouldn't say, however, more inventions in production would create jobs. Our next guest, however, disagrees, as do I. He says the new bill will hurt small inventors and argues it's tantamount to a bank bailout. Joining us now, Claudio Ballard, an inventor and patent owner, as well as chairman of Data Treasury. And you are uniquely targeted in this piece of legislation, Claudio, which I want to get to that in a second. But first, very broadly, uh, help us to understand why this legislation is so beneficial to large companies and those with significant resources and why it's so detrimental uh, to smaller inventors. Well, thank you for having me on. Uh, the principal thing that I can only address here right now is the effect it's going to have on small companies like my own, and it really applies to the banking industry. What the banking industry has done is they have uh, put us through the gauntlet of the, uh, the court systems, uh, the patent office, re-exam, examination, and so on. Uh, we even wanted a jury trial, and apparently that wasn't good enough. So now they've gone to the Congress and said, hey, let's get ourselves some legislation. And they started I just want to just wanna interrupt you for one second, just because apparently we're going to talk about your business instead of my question. So I just want to let everybody know what you're talking about. And then we can come back for my question later. You run a business that was sure. uniquely targeted in this piece of legislation uh, by uh, the government, proving that if you are rich and can influence politicians, that then you can get special favors. I was hoping to save this portion of the conversation for later, but obviously you're anxious to address it because it directly is relevant to you. So tell us how you've been victimized. Well, bottom line is this. I developed an invention, brought it to the patent office, got patents issued. Uh, went to the banking industry, showed it to them under special non-disclosure with my patent law firm. They liked it so much they said, gee, uh, we'd like to use it. We want to invest in your company and even do a joint venture with you. Then they asked me, can we come out and see your facility? And when I said, well, I'm still working out of my house, they literally laughed at me and said, don't call us, we'll call you. And uh, within a few so short I years, they went ahead and did it on their own. Uh, so what's going on here? You've got a few things going on here. I, obviously, our guest is a very unique situation where he, a politician has, in the form of Chuck Schumer, has taken money from the banks to get in there and basically manipulate the legislation to uniquely victimize him. That is a totally different issue than this overall piece of legislation that his issue is embedded inside of, which makes it harder for small inventors and easier for large inventors. How can we basically make it into reform the patent process in a way that actually has any benefit to anybody, well, or at least equal benefit to everybody, I should say? Well, I guess, and that's my question for the panel, for the specialists today, is what can a small business owner do at this point to work through the process? I mean, I understand they may get hit by large businesses and they may have to go through the legal process, but just the patent process alone seems like a complete nightmare. Well, it's definitely a process that, that takes a lot of time and effort, and that's what's disappointing. We went through it, we came through it, and we did fine with it. We followed all the rules. And after all that, the banking industry said, gee, we can't beat this guy fair and square, and let's go to Congress and buy ourselves some legislation. And that's where they went to Chuck Schumer and others, who basically are giving them a license to steal. They're getting another big bailout is what it comes down to. Uh, and that's not right and it's not fair. This is a classic example, Karen, on the, on the narrow issue of uh, Claudio's story, where, he, where because the banks are politically powerful, they can get Chuck Schumer to write legislation that exempts them. I am not politically powerful and as a result am not able to get legislation that benefits me. Is this not the root issue with why money in politics is so destructive because it allows the manipulation of legislation and is this not the core issue as to why 
basically the distrust of the media and the politi politics and business is at all time highs? Um, yes. <laughs> no, look, I think it's yet another example, though, as well, because, I mean, this is a very clear, narrow example, but I think there are other instances where things like this happen where it may even be an unintended consequence. I mean, when I worked for an education company, there was a piece of legislation passed where they literally forgot to put in the word books, which when we were talking about school supplies. I mean, so sometimes these things happen, but again, I think it's part of this larger issue of the systemic change that needs to happen, both so that you ensure that making the patent process is quicker, more efficient, you know, job creating and all of that, but at the same time that you're not essentially giving the big, you know, bonus and benefit to the bigger companies. There was a similar issue like this last year with uh, biosimilar, those generic drugs, uh, and they sort of found a way, there was legislation that finally passed where they did try to find a way to compromise between, you know, making sure that the small guy is protected and that the, that the large companies uh, also are protected but not overly advantaged. Uh, James? Uh, just, Claudia, I just want to give full disclosure. I did work for Senator Chuck Schumer. I was his staff director on the banking subcommittee. Um, I did not lobby him on this issue. Um, perhaps you should have hired me as your lobbyist, but that's a separate <laughs> issue. Um, I guess my question is, let's say Chuck Schumer, who represents New York and New York State, Chuck Schumer represents a majority of all the banks in the country. If you took money out of politics, do you think Chuck Schumer probably would have still come down on the side of the big banks on this issue? I'm willing to bet he probably would have. But I'm willing to bet that other members and other senators from smaller states without the big banks headquartered or, you know, sitting up in, uh, up on Wall Street, I'm pretty sure they might have come to your defense because the policy would have made more sense for them, you as a small business owner. My point is, is that did you hire someone to go and advocate on your behalf in front of Congress? I certainly did. That someone was me. I went in front of Congress. I went in front of senators and other House representatives and so on. The biggest complaint at the end of the day is we didn't get a fair shot to even have anybody hear about this. This was slipped into the Senate side and with no hearing at all. Uh, and then even on the House side, we didn't have a chance to go to a public hearing and discuss this, uh, talk about the concerns, nothing. It's all as if this was all done behind closed doors. So much for transparency. There was well, none. Then my suggestion would be next time you should hire a lobbyist and we'll go in and get it done for you. <laughs> how so much? Well, to be clear, Jimmy, we Jimmy, have Jimmy, folks If we're going to solicit, if we're going to do this, how much would it cost someone to hire a lobbyist to give them adequate representation in a piece of legislation? Like by order of magnitude, am I talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of dollars? I'll take the boat right behind Claudio. How about that? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a pretty <laughs> high ticket. That's a good-looking boat, Claudio. Listen, thanks for sharing your story with us, uh, Claudio. Ballard uh, uh, specifically exempted uh, in a piece of bank legislation uh, brought forth by Chuck Schumer so that the banks no longer have to pay him the fees on his patent at a time when effectively the president and others are reforming patent legislation to the benefit of those who can file quickly and to the detriment of those who may be small and not have the sophistication or attorneys immediately available to do so. As we